Today I would like to demonstrate our TracerMate scent track leak location system. The key elements to this is a vacuum pump that we use to evacuate or partially evacuate our component under test to ensure when we backfill with the tracer gas we have a good even consistency of tracer gas throughout the product. We have this, the Impacon scent track hydrogen leak detector. This, this leak detector looks for a differential so it works different than some of the sniffer type leak detectors you may be familiar with. So we can actually desensitize this to find the size defects that we're trying to locate without getting a lot of false failures. We have our tracer main instrument, which is our controls and our gas management system. All of the tracer gas comes through the tracer main into the product. At the end of the test sequence, it's all vented back through the instrument outside of the test area. Very important that we vent that out of our test area to keep our environments clean for subsequent leak tests. Today, to do this demonstration, I've chosen ACOIL. Now, we are by no means recommending this leak location to find a tenth of an ounce per year leak. That is the typical leak rate specification with this product. But this product is typically leak tested upstream of that fine leak test. They perform a gross leak test. So this is suitable for anything that be, can be detected with a vacuum decay, pressure decay, or mass flow technique. So to simulate a leak into this product, I have a 200 cc per minute leak. Now that's a, a large leak, I would consider that a gross leak. That is a, a, the type of leak that is able to be detected with a quick vacuum or a pressure decay that's typically used for this type of process. 200 cc's per minute nitrogen with one atmosphere differential, that's thousands of ounces per year. So once again, this is a leak that can be detected with a pressure decay, vacuum decay, or mass flow type technique. So I'm going to plug the leak into the test line. We're going to come to the tracer main and begin the test sequence. As you can see, I came over to a traceable leak standard to confirm that the scent track is working properly. I have good sensitivity. The tracer main, the item under test, did fail the vacuum decay. As you can see, the tracer main is now filling it. It's filled to the correct test pressure. It's notified the operator it's time to locate my leak. So I'm going to quickly scan looking for that cloud of hydrogen that's escaping through the defect. Okay, you can see that I'm very close in proximity to this very large 200 cc per minute leak, but notice I'm not getting any false failures, any signal. So it's only when I come past the leak that the unit responds and tells me that I am at the leak. So I can come away from the leak and I'm going to go back to it to confirm my, to confirm my initial finding. So once again, I can easily come, I can check these joints very close to that very large leak, and it's only when I get to my highest concentration of hydrogen that the scent track instrument goes off. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the start continue, just like I was going to make a repair in this assembly. Notice the tracer mate, all the gas is being vented out through the tracer mate out of the test area. My leak detector is not sitting here alarming. So now it's notified me the test sequence is completed, so I can disconnect my test lines, make my repairs, which is going to be very easy for me today. I'm just going to remove my 200 cc per minute leak standard. Now I'm going to go back, acknowledge the reject, and I'm going to run the exact same test cycle. So now we have pulled our vacuum, we're stabilizing. We're actually in our five second, uh, or actually it's six second vacuum decay test. And then we easily passed our vacuum decay test after the repairs have been made.